I mean, I was really, you know, God was indifferent. I was indifferent to God. I thought God was a killjoy. Where she was always a very, very, uh, she came from a very much more spiritual family than I did. And uh, so uh, I give her much, much credit for anything that I've accomplished. Uh, you talk about those early days and, um, you know, the, the fun that uh, the players had after the game, you know, going out to the, the, the bars and uh, just uh, having a good, good time drinking together. Uh, you, you, were, you were living that life. When did you become or begin to become um, aware of the, um, the spiritual dimension of life? Well, it was after 72. Mel Stevens, who runs a Teen Ranch, came around to my house one day and asked me to work at a hockey school. And I said, yeah, I do that. What do you pay? He said, well, I don't pay. Uh, you know, do you not know who you're talking to? <laughs> and uh, he started, we got into a conversation about that. Well, it's a Christian camp. Well, Christian, we're all Christians. We live in Canada, aren't we? And uh, so we got into a conversation and Mal really encouraged me to look at the spiritual dimension of life. And I, you know, I was skeptical, you know, if you can't make it in life, then you got to get God in your side. And I really sort of looked down on people that had this spiritual dimension of life. If you can't make it in life, then of course you rely on God. But uh, Mal was really just an, uh, a patient guy. He worked with me for two years. We, I, I literally spent hundreds of hours. Uh, like, who is God? Is there a God? Who is this person, Jesus Christ? And... Uh, uh, very, very skeptical, but started reading the Bible and started asking questions. And the Bible is a very difficult book to, uh, to understand when you initially start reading it. But Mel just stayed with me for two years. And so without his help, I, I don't think I would have ever become a Christian because church to me was boring. You know, I went to church, but I sat there and I was really on the golf course or somewhere else playing a hockey game. So that was really instrumental. And then we became Christians. We went to Birmingham, Alabama to play for the Birmingham Bulls. And then I got a wonderful mentor by the name of John Bradford. And uh, he poured uh, three years uh, into about eight of us that were new Christians and mentored us and really showed us what it was to, uh, to live for the Lord uh, seven days a week, 24 hours a day. And absolutely uh, changed uh, my life. And, uh, and that's what I've been doing the last 26 years. You know, Paul, you, you, you've become uh, really a renowned speaker. In fact, you were speaking to a group of 120 at a marriage ceremony <laughs> when, or a marriage seminar when uh, Crosby scored his goal. You, you didn't even see it. Your whole, but the whole seminar broke into applause and you led them in O Canada, which is a scary <laughs> thing, right? That was very scary. <laughs> yeah. I, I can speak, but I can't sing. <laughs> but, but that patriotism, I mean, all Canadians felt it. But my question is this, being, being uh, a hockey icon as you are and being so highly respected and so sought after to this day, do people get uncomfortable? Do they start shifting from foot to foot and looking down when you start talking about your faith in Jesus? Well, I, I think that I've learned to do it in a non-threatening way. I mean, obviously you get a little older, a little mature, that I, I don't preach at anybody. I just, you know, uh, this is what's happened to me. This is, you ask me why I believe in the Lord, I can tell you. You ask me the difference it makes uh, to walk with the Lord on a day-to-day -day basis, I can tell you. Uh, you can, uh, you ask me about being filled with cancer and still be, uh, enjoy life and be without angst, be without fear, then I can share my story. Mm. And so that's simply what I try to do. And a lot of times I ask permission to even share with them. Would you mind if I shared with them? And, but you can quickly pick up when somebody is interested and they're not interested. So if they're not interested, you, you know, what kind of golf clubs do you use? Uh, no, there no, you go. No, I hear you. I hear you. And we got two minutes left, Paul. What about the cancer? Tell us about that. Well, I was uh, diagnosed back in uh, November. I have lymphocytic lymphoma, a chronic leukemia. Uh, the good news is uh, I, I have no symptoms at this point. I still feel terrific. I work out all the time. And, but, uh, you know, obviously, eventually, I'm going to probably have to uh, be treated for it. But I could go uh, two, three years, uh, maybe. And, but, you know, maybe God will heal it be, before that. And so if he does, he does. If he doesn't, he doesn't. I know I have reservations. I know where I'm going. And so I have no fear of dying. And I, but today I'm going to live the best way I can. And, and we've done that. Ellen and I, my, when we became Christians in 1975, uh, we said, okay, we're going to get up in the morning. 
and we're going to try to live for the Lord. And if we wake up tomorrow, we'll do the same thing tomorrow. And so it really hasn't changed anything. It's made me probably a, a much more aware of who Jesus is. In fact, about a month after I had that cancer, I wrote in my journal one morning, Lord, thank you for giving me cancer because this is the kind of depth and intimacy in my relationship with you that I always wanted. And I don't think I have ever could have got there without having cancer. And so there's just such a wonderful freedom, even being filled with cancer yeah. and not sure what the future uh, really has in that store. But I know who holds the future and I put my trust in him. And that's the wonderful thing about being a Christian for a while. I mean, obviously, you know yourself, your faith deepens and your awareness of who he is. And because you look over your shoulder and you can see the intersect where he's come across your path and, and has never let us down. Well, Paul, it's been terrific having you here. Uh, you're uh, a man of uh, great accomplishment and so highly respected and regarded by Canadians and uh, hockey players and hockey fans around the world. And we certainly wish you the best and pray for your recovery. But what an inspiration. Thanks for coming our way. Uh, my pleasure.